there is some kind of a mathematical science to it. There's a science to put music together. And, and the great composers realize that. And today, the master musicians today, musicians today, know that, that you need to understand how the universe vibrates and how the, you know, and Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans, they understood the mathematics of the universe and how to write music. It's an incredible story of how to be inspired. Mm. You have to know what you're doing when you're a composer putting music together because it's going to affect the brain waves of the people of the world when they hear it. And it's really an incredible story. And I've heard people explaining how the great masters wrote their music. It's very, very deep. It's not just listening to pretty sound. No, no. Well, right. They did it with a vibrational. They knew how it would be vibrating in your mind and what your brain would do with this particular vibra- a vibra- vibratory frequency. One incredible story about how the brain communicates with the heavens, and the heavens communicate with you. And we know that the planets and the sun and the moon affect your brain. Mm. And the planets all have a resonant frequency, and each one of those planets, when you were born, you know, affected your mind when you were born. You came out of your mother into the world, and the sun has a profound electrical feel on the earth that is causing incredible stuff to happen. Now, whether the moon affects people, it affects the female, it affects her, uh, her periods once a month is caused by the moon. The moon pulls the oceans of the world. We know that the moon affects the oceans. Why? Because they're water, and the moon affects water. This is why your body is like 76% water. So how does the moon affect you at the full moon? Well, it causes you to get silly and crazy, sometimes really crazy. So we call you a lunatic. Why? Because the moon is affecting your blood. It's affecting your brain. The vibrations in your mind are being affected by the sun, the moon, Mars, Jupiter. And so women are from Venus and men are from Mars, meaning our minds operate differently because of the way we are born and and who we are and the vibrations in the brain. It's a very big subject about inspiration. And, and the inspiration comes from out there. Well, right. And, and the, the thing about this, too, is that, uh, you know, when, when you examine, okay, the very basic elements, melody, uh, rhythm, harmony, the, these sorts of things, all of these have mathematical components to them. They have very precise measurements. You can bet uh, on it. You know, That's and, right. and tones and such. Now, here's the thing about it. You, you talked about how Hollywood utilizes these things for particular purposes, but... You know, before there was a Hollywood in California, anyway, uh, uh, religions you, you utilize this as well. I mean, even today, absolutely, uh, absolutely. In, in in synagogues, they sing. Yes, they're they're uh, they 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 sing certain things for certain reasons. Tone is certainly something that goes on. You have uh, your your hymns in Christian churches. Chants. You have the chanting and Christian chants, the Gregorian chants. The chants. All mm-hmm. mathematical. It's, it's really quite a story about inspiration and how the brain can be inspired by vibrations from space. Well, right. And even, even when you take a look at something which is more modern, uh, like gospel music, which, which I happen to appreciate gospel, uh, yeah. you know, a, a lot of it, not all of it, but, uh, the, I, cause full disclosure, I, I was a musician and, uh, not, not a superiorly sophisticated musician, but sophisticated enough to recognize uh, the power, and you can even see, uh, it in, 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 you know, at, at a rock concert or at a concert of any type where an entire crowd can become seemingly mesmerized. That's uh, right. By a performance, uh, they, they become engaged in certain group activities, and that means that whether it is that, uh, trance-like state you see at, uh, at, at a, at a ballet or, 
uh, a classical music uh, presentation through orchestral means, or if you're watching a mosh pit, it doesn't matter. There is a, a, a thing which happens here where the cadence, the rhythm, the uh, harmony, lack thereof, or disharmony, you see, because disharmony is useful just like harmony is, never forget that something that is incongruous and mathematically, diametrically opposed or precisely placed in a certain way, you know, even the exposition of conflict is useful to create a certain condition in the observer. And trauma is something that is useful to create a condition in the in the mind of the observer. So whether you're attempting to soothe the savage beast with it, you know, that old <laughs> phrase, or to wake it up, uh, you, you can achieve either through this, and again, this is uh, a, a, a bit more mystical than accidental and a bit more precise than people give it credit for. And I think uh, the fact that it's uh, pervasive throughout religions of all sorts, there are of musical... Of all sorts, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the ancient religions use chants and music and it inspires your mind, and and we know that the planets inspire you. And uh, as a matter of fact, during the Middle Ages, the early Middle Ages, uh, the word for the stars was, we spell star, S-T-A-R. Mm-hmm. But in the Middle Ages, the church, uh, the word star was A-S-T-A-R, Astar. So in Astar, we take the A off and just spell it S-T-A-R. But no, it was originally an Astar, the little lights in the heavens were Astars. And so there was even a Jewish family, a very famous Jewish family called the Astars. Astar was a star. And so the idea was developed during the Middle Ages in, in the church that if you don't follow the Astars, if you don't know how the Astars affect you, because they do affect you. It's called astrology, and most people laugh at it. Well, there's nothing to laugh at. The stars do affect you. And so the, you're being affected by the astars. But if you don't know that, your life is going to be a disastar. Mm. And that's where we get the word a disaster. A disastar means you don't follow the astars. Because the ancient peoples you use the stars to navigate around the world on the high seas. They would use the stars. And so if you, and so if they use the stars to navigate the world on the high seas, the idea was expressed in religion that you should use the stars to navigate your life because they affect you. And if you don't know how to use the stars, then your life is going to be a disaster. A disaster. Because you don't realize. You've never been told, and you've been lied to, and mis- misunderstand, and you don't know how the stars and the planets affect you. You are a part of the universe. And the moon affects your, your blood. The moon affects your a woman. The moon affects your water in your body. That's why we call people uh, lunar ticks. <clears throat> so there's so much more to learn about inspiration. It's, a, it's an incredible subject. It has a wide array of entries into that subject, which is just uh, astounding how much mathematics and vibrational frequencies all affect your brain and gives you the idea that you can create out of nothing. You can create things. Uh, you know, it just is in your mind to do it. You just were inspired to do it. Mm. I've written, I've written things in my, in my time that people have read and they said, my God, this was inspired. I know that when I was writing it, I didn't realize what I was writing. I felt it. I didn't know intellectually. I felt the knowledge and I was writing down what I was feeling and when I was through with it people read it and said my god this is inspired what do you mean inspired well I mean I I just felt something leading me to write the way I wrote and therefore you can call it inspiration 
Well, you so know, it's a big go, story. Yeah, no, absolutely. And going along with these lines just really quickly, uh, yeah, I'd like to get your commentary on this because uh, some people might say, well, you know, Chuck, not every church has uh, uh, music. But you see, it does. <laughs> Here's the thing. In some cases, music is not necessarily with a pipe organ or a choir. Um, right. There, There is the use of tone and the utterance of words. Now, That's sometimes right. words are there for the purpose of making a point, and there's hidden meanings in those words, but it goes beyond necessarily, uh, it goes beyond, not not necessarily just relegated to, I should say, uh, uh, etymology, the true meaning, where it came from. Uh, it, that That is not necessarily all there is to it. Well, look sometimes, at rap. The, well, the tone. Well, b- before we even go into rap, the tone of certain words and the actual use of certain syllables lined up together, you answer back and forth. There is a, uh, a, a question and response that kind of goes between the presenter at the church who, you know. You're right. You're right. And, Absolutely. And, and, and if people go, well, not really, not really. Well, which which Christian church do you not all say amen or also That's with right. you or, you know. So be it and all that, yeah. yeah. So these things are not necessarily just there to program you to respond automatically without thought, but they are there for that too. Um, but But in some cases, even the utterance of those words – in, in, in mysticism in all forms, the use of particular sounds, just the sound is just as important. And like I say, what, what is music but a complex arrangement of said sounds? So, of course. you know, in, in a way, even when you don't have music in the church, you still have the use of sound. And we talked about it on this show also. The concept that uh, the architecture of these things, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the great cathedrals and everything else, you, you ever notice they sound wonderful? And, um, right. you know, the, 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 the choir sounds uh, five times larger than it is or w- would ever sound in a square room somewhere because they're literally designed that way for acoustic, you know, uh, uh, absolutely. They Absolutely. You're right. That's it. That's. Uh, I've, I've listened to professional musicians explaining the pipe organ and the organ and how, you know, it reverberates off the walls and the ceilings and, the, and it comes back to you and how music needs to be presented to you in a theater a certain way. And there's a very big difference between the vibratory, uh, frequencies of real and Incredible music and what we got today called cyber. Mm-hmm. Cyber is very dangerous to the human brain. Cyber hearing you hearing music on the on the disc and it's a, you, know, you play it on a computer and you're hearing this beautiful music, but no, it's cyber. It's not it's not the same. And there have been some very important documents written by doctors in Europe talking about hearing music on a cyber machine as opposed to a record, which is a vibra- vibration uh, playing on a record. Uh, the records are the right way to hear music. Cyber is not. Cyber is not the way to hear music. It affects your brain, and we're being affected by cyber. You know, today we, are, we know that through our telephones and through our cell phones, Cyber is not that great. It's an incredible invention, but it's not that great for hearing, especially for humans listening to music. Cyber yeah. is not that good. You know, I've often wondered about that because, uh, again, the the very mystical idea. See, I'm not super sophisticated on this subject, but just sophisticated enough to know there's a difference. I, I've wondered about that sort of shallow nature of the digital media versus uh anything let's let's go back to music for just a quick second well when you hear a recording of someone playing a guitar and it could be anything name a common song i don't care what it is you hear that guitar you recognize it you know what it is it's a common song i mean it could be uh happy birthday i don't know it could be uh uh jeez uh name in america america the beautiful i heard on a guitar recently um, 
which I heard it played very well. And uh, and, and not commenting on patriotic music or anything here. Let's stick with the guitar. Um, and, and I've heard it played well in a digital sense. Now, when you catch uh, in your ear someone playing a physical guitar where the natural reverberating strings are now traveling directly to your ear. That's right. You will, exactly right. You will get a completely different impression, <laughs> completely different emotional reaction. You may recognize it and say, okay, that's the same song which I heard in a digital way, and digital recordings are nice and clean, and they seem very orderly, and they seem very accurate. But they lack the natural, you know, and this isn't me going, gee, I wish they would go back to records, which I wish they would, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's not that's not what I'm saying. Uh, th- there is a difference between what has been preserved in a digital way and the actual real thing, the natural thing. It's like... Uh, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. That's precisely what I'm saying. And incidentally, there is a very big company back east that is now reviving the idea of records. They are now pressing records and taking all this, the so-called music of today and actually putting them onto vinyl records. And it's a big company. You go on the web and check it out and find out the company that's producing music now on records and they're producing the, the players, record players, uh, because they, they've come to the conclusion that, you know, to really appreciate the beauty of music, you have to do it on a record. You can't do it with cyber. Well, you may not know this, Jordan, but but a lot of uh, a lot of record companies and individual artists who put out their own stuff have now uh, uh, gone to this concept of creating a limited run of uh, of vinyl records for new releases, which mm-hmm. I didn't think we would see. I mean, it, it seems very strange, but everything from uh, uh, you know brand new artists, and I do mean brand new. You never heard of them. And uh, I never heard of them, and probably nobody's ever heard of them, and who knows if we will hear from them again. Uh, artists are coming out that have uh, record deals with brand new, they just put it out in 2019, music, and it's on vinyl as well as, you can yep. get it MP3 and you can get it digitally. Uh, e- even artists who've been around for 20, 30 years who haven't produced a piece of vinyl in the past 20 <laughs> yeah. um, you know, they're even coming back around with, uh, with vinyl versions. Uh, That's right. And that means, I mean, everything from heavy metal artists to, uh, to jazz artists are putting yep. this stuff out on vinyl again. So it's not just one company. It seems to be across the board. There's a, it's, it's not the prominent trend yet. But it is, you know, worthy coming enough. Coming back. It's coming back. Well, right? li- listen, no, nobody's going to do it if they can't make money at it. And obviously there's an appreciation and a market for it, right? That's so, right. You know, th- there's a reason for all of that. But so, you have to scientifically understand how digital affects the human brain through the ears. You have to understand that. Mm-hmm. Then you can appreciate why the vibration on a, on a record is different than vi- uh, on the vinyl is different than in the digital and why hearing it on a on a vinyl record is far far superior so you have to understand the science behind it most people don't i've heard it i don't understand it necessarily completely but at least i've got a, a, an idea cuz i've heard the experts explaining it and I get the idea. Well, right. I have a real general question because I know you, you you probably haven't, you know, listen, one of the few things Jordan doesn't seem to know uh, a, a huge, huge amount about, <laughs> right, yep. is this. But I think you can answer this question if you're aware of these uh, uh, looks into it by uh, by people who are well, well schooled on it. Is uh, is this is is it a matter of it's just so artificial that it doesn't really do what the original music did, which is what I contend anyway. But um, is it just that, or does it actually seem to do damage according to what these guys are finding? Well, the doctors in Europe I've heard and listened to uh, says it actually does damage to the nervous system. Uh-huh. And the brain, the way that you accept the vibrations and translate it into music for the mind, it actually does damage. And this is why we're talking about what cell phones do to you, how cell phone is digital 
and how that affects your brain, the, set, uh, the, the vibration from the cell phone, and therefore you apply that to the music that you get on the, on the disc. Mm-hmm. So digital is not really very good for the humans. Yes, it is I, interesting to be able to use it and how it right. works, but it's not really superior. No, I understand that. I was curious about this for one reason, and that is that uh, I thought, you know, well, look, let, let, let's talk about the cell phone for a second. Um, this idea that you're you're so accustomed to dealing with images of and avatars of and digital voices uh, this kind of thing. I, I have always been under this impression that it was uh, uh, there for the express purpose of blurring the line between a real voice, a real thing, and 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 it, indeed, I, I do believe I've been proven correct over time that that's certainly what part of the purpose is. It but, is. Uh, but 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 I'm wondering if if that's you know not all there is to it. But what do you think about this concept? You know, where. Just like with the music and everything else, and see, how does this relate to religion? You might be asking yourself. <laughs> I think I think that the, I think that the masters of this world, the guys at the very top of the world, the scientists who are designing our world for us, because we don't we don't understand how it works, and so the masters who are the real brains are designing our world for us, designing computers and rockets and lasers and all the other high technology they are working toward one goal and that is to hom- homogenize the whole of life on the earth bring everybody together in one place no matter what race color creed where you are from it doesn't matter they're making all humans uh conform to one thing we all will one day all be able to communicate together and we will all be under one government, one religion, one concept, and there will be no more individuality, no more of this human individualism as as, as going. It's getting, just understand human creativity and individuality is slowly but surely methodically and scientifically being weeded out of the human race we're losing our individuality we're losing our human humanity we're losing our minds we're losing our country we've lost our freedoms we're just losing period to our superior people who are working to entrap us to cause us to you know to live the way they want us to and they don't want any individuality they are not interested in having any nationalities you know the italians being italian for italy and the french being french for france and the british being english for england no they don't want that they want people everybody to be amalgamated into one big happy criminal family one big family on the earth where there is no allegiances to anything not to your mother not to your family not to your country uh nothing you have your allegiance to the masters who run the human race that's why they're digitizing everything and bringing us all together whether you want to be together or not they are amalgamating everything all around the world and the purpose Right. No individuality, no more creativity. And, they and will decide what you know. Exactly. And the purpose of this, obviously, just like with the music, see, this goes all the way across the board. Uh, one of the, one of the greatest things that has ever been done for them to be able to make this easier to transition into the world of the unreal is to distance us much further from things which are, uh, actually true connections. And we've talked with Jordan about the true connection to the divine and how we are being kept from it. We have talked to him uh, about the destiny of the living man and woman here on the earth and how that has also been hijacked. But religion is one of those vehicles which is at the base of all of this stuff. See, without religious order, you couldn't have governmental order the way it is. You couldn't have the industries doing what they do. You couldn't have the acceptance and the propaganda being fed to people based on their ignorance.